Welcome back to Disera Media Literacy, the radio series that aims to educate and empower listeners to navigate the media landscape in a critical and informed way. In today's episode, we will focus on media literacy and civic engagement. So what is the role of media in democracy and civic engagement? Media plays an important role in democracy and civic engagement. It serves as a watchdog for government and other institutions and provides citizens with the information they need to make informed decisions. However, it is important for media consumers to be critical and discerning in their consumption of news and information. All that we've discussed over the past number of episodes could lead you to doubt every piece of information you encounter online. But rather than disengaging, our intention is to create awareness and knowledge in order for you to actively engage in a safe, informed and confident manner. In order to stay informed and engaged as a citizen, It's important to have a variety of news sources and to consume news from different perspectives. Here are some tips. Follow reputable news outlets and fact-checking organisations. Seek out diverse perspectives and voices in your news consumption. Stay informed on local and state politics as well as national and international news. Get involved in local community organisations and events. Learn more about digital media by availing of free courses that are available. There are many reputable courses and websites that offer information and guidance on misinformation, disinformation and malinformation. For example, Media Literacy Ireland's website has a wide range of free resources and online courses to suit all ages. Pointer.org, an American institute of journalism, provides training and resources through MediaWise. Their aim is to empower people of all ages to become more critical consumers of content online. Check our website to access more helpful resources and links. So in what way can we participate in the media and express our views? There are many ways to participate in the media and express your own views. Here are some ways. Write letters to the editor of your local newspaper. Call into radio talk shows to express your opinions. Create your own content online through blogging, podcasting and social media. Get involved in local media production, such as community television and radio stations. Be an active citizen in your community by voting, attending town hall meetings and being engaged in civic activities. Our next episode will be our final episode of the series and will focus on a conclusion and next steps. We will summarise key points from the training course, encourage continued learning and share resources for further learning. Be sure to tune in for the conclusion of Disera Media Literacy. And in the meantime, don't forget to check out our website for more information and resources on media literacy. Thank you for tuning in to Disera Media Literacy. Until next time, stay informed, stay curious and stay media literate. So we've just heard about media literacy and civic engagement and um, we've been giving tips um, through the lesson on staying informed and engaging as a a citizen. And they mentioned the Pointer Institute, media wise. And what other places can people get informed? Um, Well, I know um, our organisation, URAV, we're a non-profit. We're members of Media Literacy Ireland. And um, I suppose the best way to describe that would be um, um, a hub of 
all of the different actors across the media landscape. So um, you'd have social media organisations, you'd have the traditional media organisations, um, community media, local media. Um, so it's it's a real smorgasbord of, of media and um, they send us out newsletters to keep us informed of what's going on, which is really, really helpful because... Um, I suppose like so many things nowadays, things are changing so so rapidly that you want to do the right thing, but you're not always sure what the right thing is, you know. Um, so uh, so kind of that pooling organisation. So Media Literacy Ireland, like if you Google them, you'll you'll find them there, and they run um, they run campaigns as well. They they try to look at the the various topics and simplify them into into you know be media aware campaigns and and uh, and that kind of thing and then they also um would highlight you know kind of models of best practice so when when somebody when somebody kind of cracks something that works and um, they they'll they'll put it out there so i know it's very use, very useful for us you know like our organization you have european audio visual so we're all about this space um you know that uh, you know and we're a non-profit so it's uh, media literacy would be a big thing that we do and um I think that uh, if you're just a regular person out there, uh, that same information will be really useful. Yes, but also you'll find the different members of Media Literacy Ireland. So um, it shows that these organisations are committed to trying to get it right. So uh, I think that's a that's a really uh, good good place to start. Yeah. So, you, you, you know, it's 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 more than likely that people who are part of that are reputable. Yeah. organizations um to engage with i i think age action ireland is one that engages um with it so um yeah it's a, it's a good source of information and they did they do have training um do they well, uh, on well, our the media, access to resource well media literacy ireland um would uh media, you know they're the hub you know mm. so um i i you know they they would have i've been i've been at different kind of conferences and things like that that they've put on um but i think they're more about um directing people too so they they link you in with yeah, yeah. i think they they have some um interesting courses um that you, they they have links to but we will have um any links in our, of these organizations or anything we can recommend um you know to go with with this series of um, talks. Um, have you any suggestions? Well, I think first and foremost, people need to understand there's a responsibility with using social media. So I come from journalism where if you had if you wanted to get a story into the news, you had to go to an editorial meeting and pitch it and and answer questions of people who were challenging whether it was newsworthy, whether it was relevant, whether it was in the public interest and that kind of gatekeeping is very important. And I think it's very important for for exceptionally good journalism or any kind of journalism. I do also recognise that there's a value in citizen journalism where people see something happening and they can, they may be recorded it on their phone and they can um, present that as news footage. Sometimes they'll sell it to a news organisation. Sometimes they'll put it online themselves. Um, it's just important that it's accurate. And a lot of people who use social media just don't understand the rules of journalism. So they might see something and assume because they can see a video that it's true. But for example, right now we're seeing uh, several videos which are being attributed to the Israel, uh, well, one of them is me being attributed to the Israel-Gaza war, but actually it's from Ukraine, the Ukraine war from a year or so ago. Uh, there's another video which claims to be um, firing at Israeli rockets, but actually it's from a game, a video game. Right. And the video games are shot like films these days, so yeah. they're extremely high quality and you look at it and you yeah, think it's real. So yeah. because people see something, particularly in a video, video makes people feel like they're there, they can be in with their own eyes and therefore it's real. So people need to really think about how to assess whether something mm. is real. Check where it came from, if any credible, new, if it does come from citizen journalism, has it been checked by an, uh, an organisation like Storyful or BBC Verify? Mm. Has it been reshared by some of the credible news organisations? Uh, and people also need to be very careful about things like um, crimes and people being arrested for crimes. Emotion, as we talked about in one of our earlier episodes, is in incredibly, it's much, it's very much a driver of people's actions. So when there is a crime committed which involves extreme violence or uh, sexual violence, people are very emotive about that and mm -hmm. angry about that. And they may hear a name being associated with this crime or alleged crime who maybe the, the police are talking to or 
just the name has been has been put out there, even if even if they haven't been charged with anything or brought in for questioning. And people sometimes think it's okay to share that name. That is really standing in the way of justice. Justice, Firstly, everyone has a right to the presumption of innocence until proven guilty in a court of law. So you can't name them. If you do name them, it goes to court and they could argue, I can't get a fair trial. Mm. So even if they did commit the crime, they could get off based on the fact that somebody took the action of naming them through social media. So it's really important to think about your actions and think about the consequences of your actions. It's also the same if you're criticising some something that somebody said or somebody, what somebody said. Yes, you might disagree with something or even somebody who's just on television and you criticise them because you don't like them or they don't like the way they look or the way they speak. And those comments can be incredibly hurtful to people. Mm. So mm. it's very important for people to just take a moment, think about the consequences of their actions and the impact it'll have on people. And can, um, can if you do make um, claims about somebody, you know, is there recourse on social media of, you know, um, suing someone for libel or or? Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, pe- people can take a case, you mm-hmm. know, um, you know, I think that's, the, you know, it's probably costly, you know, but um, they can. Um, but I think I think one of the big difficulties now is that um, before the digital era, you know, which not that long ago, you know, it's our, it's our <laughs> lifetime. But before the digital era, era, you know, somebody said something and that was reported back to that person said something about you. And it was all in a very small community that that happened. But now in that very same, like ju- ju- imagine it's a Saturday night and somebody's sitting in a pub and makes a comment and then that gets back to the person and, and that's that. But that very same comment in that very same pub where somebody has a camera and captures that can go right across the world. Can go right across the world. You know, um, I I I shared a a little snippet of um, uh, just an engagement I had with 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 my mom, um, and um, one point nine million people saw that. Mm. You know, that would have been just something that I showed to my immediate family. But one point nine people million people saw that. So it means it means that you know. Just a careless, a careless word or uh, something that's, un, you know, that's not fact checked or whatever that you throw out there can have massive repercussions because there's no end to where that can go. Yeah. Now, you mm. know, and I think that's one of the uh, chastening things, I suppose, about the world we live in now is you really do have to be careful what you say because there's no end to the potential impact. Yeah, of what you say, and there's no going back and saying, um, "Oh no, I didn't say that. I didn't," because it's recorded. You know, there's very little now that's not recorded. You know, it's yeah. Um, this is recorded, and even if you delete a tweet, somebody can have taken a screenshot Shot of it. I've seen that yeah. recently in the last few days. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the tips was staying informed in on local and state politics as well as national and international yeah. news. I we know we've spoken about this a bit in other episodes. Yeah. Can we talk a bit more? Yeah, it's something I feel quite strongly about, actually, because um, when I was running a local community newspaper in, in Finglas um, back in at the end of the 1980s, um, I, I re- like I was very, very aware of which politicians were doing what because I was there photographing the different mm-hmm. events that were going on. But I was also aware that there were certain um, parties or certain politicians that were incredibly good at feeding me with press releases. Mm-hmm. And then there were others that weren't. Um, so inevitably, um, no matter what my own personal feelings were one way or the other and, you know, trying to keep uh, trying to keep that out of it. Um, some politicians were getting a lot more space because they were a lot better at providing it. And then others who might have had something important to say weren't saying it, you know. Mm -hmm. And that, like I remember at the time being quite frustrated by that. And now, now you've got certain politicians or certain parties that are incredibly slick with social media. And um, so you're getting this skewed sense of um of what's out there and and they're able to drive agendas um you know in 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 a in a very very compelling way you know so um i think we're seeing it all over the world where um 
there are there are certain politicians um you know who find themselves out and and others that find themselves in just because of how clever they are with yeah. social media so it's it a, a, lo- a lot of it is no longer about policies and actions a lot of it's about how slick your presentation is you know and and people in uh, rural areas might not be able to get to say it was a group discussion or a think tank or even a demonstration they might not be able to get to it for whatever reason but they can participate in in the engagement online mm-hmm. and that helps people to become more engaged in yeah. in society yeah um, it also mentions getting involved in local community organisations and events. And again, it's um, particularly for the target group for this. Um, you know, it is, you know, it, it might seem going back to, you know, away from the social media, but it's keeping those what connections you have in the real world and then maybe working with them um it, you I think, know, yeah, I think that's a very good point, Moira, because, um, you know, if, if you if you have met somebody in real life at, at a social occasion and, you know, you chat and you get on well and then you then you connect with them online. It's not just some stranger you've met online. It's a real person. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that is a way because, uh, you know, I, I know that I know that people are, you know, constantly trying to ensure that they have a circle, a community around them. Um, but but you know beyond perhaps their own immediate family they're trying to meet people or they're trying to extend their interests but i think that's a really good um point is that if you get along physically and physically meet mm. somebody and and i think maybe that's one thing that we can do in as communities and as societies is facilitate um meetings that can be the foundation of an online relationship yeah. and an online and i think it is happening i suppose with them um, i know the vc in ireland um and in a lot of other community organisations do provide media literacy courses in the community. And I'd urge any of our listeners um, to look up that information. And, you know, it's an opportunity to meet people in the real world. It's an opportunity to troubleshoot um, various issues or to just um, find ways of fact check, fact checking together or, you know, just even maybe get um, advice on if you do get any strange emails or strange requests. Um, you know, when you are working with others, um, I think it's all, always um, a good, a better idea, a good, a good idea. So it's keeping that engagement with, in the real world. And then just, you know, talking about civic engagement as well, you know, social media is um, a fantastic tool for um, for organising you know different different things like I know in in our own community, um we we have a beach cleanup you know, um I, it, which wouldn't happen <laughs> if it weren't for the fact that you know through WhatsApp groups or through Facebook groups you know the 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 day the the time the thing you know and then um after it's taken place then. Um, there's all photographs of, uh, you know, go up online of people, you know, tidying things and having a cup of tea and all that. So so there's, there's a lovely real social um, and, and civic engagement in, in, in that. But it's it's supported by, in this case, uh, Facebook and WhatsApp are the, are the two that I find are, are great, are great for that. Yeah, I found that as well. There was uh, there's a solidarity group for people seeking international protection and it's called Solidarity Runners because it started with running, but it's walking as well. It's yeah. all kinds of events. So I saw that this was happening and I went on a walk in my local area and I got to meet all these people who were seeking international protection. And they're all from different places and they're all fascinating and interesting people. And I wouldn't have ever maybe known about that opportunity if I hadn't been on social media. social media. Yeah, there are those um, little group. I, I mean, what are the names of them where if you have an interest meet in up. meet up, meet up seems yeah. like, um, you know, a, a, mm-hmm. a place, you know, to engage in the real world, yeah. um, but through social media. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we close up? Um it's just such a it's such a mind boggling. Uh, I've used that word a lot over these series of chats that we've had, but it's such a it's such a vast um, area that that when you when you when you you kind of look at one thing that you want to hone in on, it's 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 hard. And I think I think that says a lot about social media. And uh, you've spoken earlier on about mental health and about taking a break. Um, I find now that um, I'll sometimes say right today, phones phones turning off, the computer staying shut. Um, and I, I think that's a really, really uh, important. And maybe we're talking about civic engagement. Maybe go out and have that walk with your neighbours, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, totally agree. Well, next week, we'll, or 
next next, after the next lesson <laughs> after the next lesson um you know we will be look we'll, we'll be looking at what we've done over the last um few sessions and um we will discuss anything you can think of between now and then um we'll talk about it there thank you thank you